front door here. Before I review one of the hardest exotics to get in Forsaken at this moment, I just wanted to mention that I put out a video showing how to get to the final boss of the Shattered Throne, as well as how to defeat her easily even if you're a fire team of low light level guardians. Go check out that video if you're having any trouble with this raid-like dungeon. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell because YouTube sucks. Also, please comment down below your thoughts on my review and the Wish Ender bow itself. Let me know what you think. Like the video if you liked it. Now enjoy my review of Wish Ender. This lore entry might have mistakes in it, but here's how it reads. Sir Ido stood, slow joints snapping, second to none. But the Savs themselves stood straight-backed, sharp-sighted, pleased to skewer enemies at any distance. Sir Ido listened close, head cocked, arrow knocked, listened to her queen's layered lies and heard only the truth as endless courtly complaints flowed around them like the mists of Divalia. Sir Ido watched shadows wind, warp, widen, watched surveillance feeds, encrypted, snaps, the weapon hand of every woman and man who wished an audience. Sir Ido swore with revelation, righteous fury, Betrayed, 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 betrayed. Swore an oath to rise again. Sir Ido drew, loose, fell, lost. Bows are in a weird place in Destiny 2. I'll be the first to say that they do feel incredibly powerful in PvE activities. Nightfalls are especially used. Considering your ability to quickly dart in and out of cover, lining up precision perfect shots, they can at times seem essential for survival. PvP is a whole different story and Wish Ender will have you wishing that bows could one shot kill like snipers can. But that is certainly a discussion for another time. Bows function entirely different than other weapons in Destiny. A lack of reload and the fact that they require finesse to draw and fire makes them an exceptional skill-based tool for your arsenal. One point that is important to mention is that anytime you're about to fire, you can cancel your shot by pressing the reload button. I mention this because it has surprised me that many people are not aware of this fact, but I'm getting ahead of myself. First off, let's talk aesthetics. This is one of the prettiest weapons Bungie has ever imagined. A handcrafted knight wielding a sword adorns it, evoking a Tolkien-esque atmosphere of fantasy and magic. Likewise, carved markings light up with a magical blue glow as you draw the wish ender. Finally, once the illuminated sword drains of its energy, the bow will fire on its own. This bow gets the highest marks for me for making me feel at times like the Dreaming City is some land of Middle Earth. Nothing could be more elvish than wish ender. It makes you feel like Legolas. In a year where swords seem to have gotten the shaft, it's nice to see one weapon type is getting the love it truly deserves. I didn't think I would like bows when they were first announced, but they are by far my favorite weapon in Forsaken. I just love the look and feel of Wish Ender. Even though the bow takes a long time to draw, it feels realistic and powerful when I let fly an arrow straight into an ogre's head. Sporting very high impact and high stats overall, Wish Ender looks insane on paper. Starting with the Queen's Wrath perk, unique to this bow, if you fully draw the bow when aiming down the sights, you gain true sight, being able to see enemies behind walls and even other barriers. While this is a great perk, it is actually one of the reasons that Wish Ender is hard to recommend. The proximity on this can be far-reaching at times, Many times I swear it failed to trigger, especially in PvP activities. This leads to instances where I should have known an enemy was about to ambush me around the corner with a shotgun, but the perk didn't activate. Wish Ender especially excels at killing Taken due to its anti-Taken fleshing perk. I love using it to deal with yellow bar veteran enemies. It hits very hard, and because it's a bow you can crit over and over all day long. One special perk that's fun to use, called Broadhead, allows you to sometimes overpenetrate with only one arrow, killing multiple enemies at once. If this happens in PvP, you feel like an absolute god with this weapon, but it's rare and therefore you can't depend on this perk. Unfortunately, this bow is quite a niche weapon and by this I mean that 
Unless you're fighting Taken, every arrow you fire is going to be overkill. Sure, it's powerful, but completely unnecessary and harmed by a long draw time. It's longer than any other bow due to its high tension string perk, which ensures better accuracy at the cost of firing time. Considering that other bows sport perks such as Explosive Head and Rampage, this is little reason to use this bow over them. Both those perks work in every situation, and with any type of enemy. You can only choose one exotic weapon to run with, and so only the best weapon should really be on the table. Wish Under is not one of them. If it had an instant draw time or something, then I would say it would be one of the strongest exotics in Destiny. So, what exactly is Wish Ender good for then? Well, in PvE, if you like playing with no HUD, which I do, then you can use this bow for target acquisition while maintaining clean screen. And if you're playing PvP and want a real challenge, you can disable your HUD there too. Since this bow has true sight, you can use that rather than radar to find other guardians. As I mentioned earlier though, true sight is not as dependable a perk as we would like it to be. When it works, a good strategy is to run around with a shotgun and use it to ambush other players. I really like the Ikelis shotgun for this. Now, I've heard Wish Ender synergizes very well with the Hunter exclusive exotic arm piece Oathkeeper. However, RNGesus has not blessed me with those yet. Oathkeeper allows you to aim down sights indefinitely and also speeds up draw time for all bows. Since the lore entry on those arms is from Sir Idol herself, they're probably essential for any Wish Ender build to be viable. All that aside though, I do love Wish Ender. It is a beautiful and powerful bow that unfortunately at this time is simply outclassed by all other weapons. Both for PvE and PvP activities. I'll still continue to use it for those reasons, and if I get my hands on the Oathkeeper exotic for hunters, I'll likely make a video showing how overpowered it is. As it stands, however, until Bungie makes this bow kill other players with a single headshot, you should consider forsaking it in lieu of other options. True Sight is nice, but considering how long it takes to draw a Wish Ender, it will likely get you killed more often than it helps. Wish Ender will have you wishing you took Cade's advice and ran Ace of Spades, wishing that Forsaken Exotics were actually worth using, and wishing that Sir Ida's bow lived up to the challenge it takes to acquire it. But like Malfeasance, Wish Ender falls short. Unless Bungie makes some major changes, it will likely go down as one of the most disappointing exotics in all of Destiny. It glows though! I really hope you guys liked the video and uh, definitely subscribe and ring that bell because if you don't ring the bell, then you won't hear from me very often. Sad face. Please share the video everywhere, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Okay, bye-bye.